Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking an early look at the upcoming Cooler Master Pi 40 case for the Raspberry Pi 4. Before we get started here, I do want to mention that the case I have in my possession right now is an earlier unit. This is not the final production level. They still need to iron out a few imperfections with the TPU wrapping on the case itself, but overall this is getting really, really close, and personally, I think it looks great. Now, if you're not familiar with the Pi 40 case, it supports the Raspberry Pi 4, and Cooler Master actually did a Kickstarter to get this up and running, and it was fully funded in under one hour. It's actually a great little design here. We do have full access to the GPIO and it has a built-in power and reset button that is fully functional on the case I have here. So inside of the box, we're gonna receive the hardware needed and a couple thermal pads for the CPU on the Raspberry Pi. We also receive a bracketing system. So this will support a vase mount and it does mount to the bottom of the Pi 40 case. It comes with four of these little feet here and you can pretty much mount these in any way you'd like. You can mount it to the wall if you want to. And finally, the case itself. Like I mentioned, this is not final production level. As you can see, the Cooler Master logo is actually not etched in here yet. And the TPU wrapping does have a few imperfections. But this will be all fixed before they start really shipping these out to the public. But overall, I think it's a sleek looking little case and I can't wait to start testing it. Now along with the case, the hardware, and the mounting system, it does come with instructions. But they're printed on the inside of the box, which I thought was pretty cool. So along with this case being a total heatsink for your Raspberry Pi, we also have that built-in power button, full access to the GPIO, full access to the SD card, and all the ports on the Pi 4. We even have this little slot here for ribbon cables in case you want to connect a display or a camera. And as for the mounting hardware that is included with it, it mounts right to the bottom of the case itself. We have four screws here. This will just hold the bottom on. And if you'd like to mount this up, we have three different positions for each one of these feet. So you can mount this anywhere you'd like. So as you can see, the bottom of this is made out of a little bit of a smoked clear plastic. And the whole idea behind this is to allow people to 3D print different bottom halves so we could fit different single board computers in here. I'm not sure if they're going to be offering them for sale or just the STL files, but that was the whole idea behind it. Either way, this case is mainly going to be used for the Raspberry Pi 4. So inside of the case here, you can see that we have this 90 degree adapter for the GPIO pins. This also has that built in power and reset button, but you will need to install a script. And here's the cooling system. Basically the whole case itself, it's made out of aluminum. We have this little block here that'll sit on top of the Raspberry Pi CPU, soak up all the heat. And in theory, keep our Raspberry Pi 4 cool enough, even overclocked to the maximum overclock of 2.1 gigahertz. And I will be testing that in this video. So assembly on this unit is super easy. It comes with these thermal pads. I just placed one on the Raspberry Pi 4 CPU. We're going to line up the GPIO pins from the case and the Pi itself. Make sure everything's lined up. We can press it right in there. And we have the Raspberry Pi 4 inside of the case. All that's left to do is put the bottom on. I just usually make sure it slides over our HDMI, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and the USB Type-C. And that's pretty much it. We just have four screws that need to go into the bottom. And it's finished. We have access to the USB ports, Ethernet, GPIO, and the micro SD card. Plus, we have that built-in power button. So now it's time to get into a little bit of thermal testing. I'm going to be using Stressberry and Raspberry Pi OS. What I'm going to do is test it without a cooler on it at the stock clocks, 1.5 gigahertz. Then I'm going to test it with the Pi 40 case at the stock clocks, and then we'll move up to 2.1 gigahertz. So here we are with a fully updated version of Raspberry Pi OS. I am at the stock clocks, as you can see, 1.5 gigahertz. We're doing a stress test here using Stressberry, and I do have the Pi 40 case on it right now. This test takes about 10 minutes. I'm going to run this three times. Like I mentioned, we're going to be testing it without the case at the stock clocks, with the case at the stock clocks, and then we'll go up to 2.1 gigahertz. I got a feeling that this case will be able to handle 2.1. And the best thing about Stressberry, as soon as you're finished, you can actually just create a quick chart. So I'm going to let this finish up. I'm going to run a few more tests, and I'll be right back with a chart. So the Pi 40 case actually did a lot better than I thought it would. In green, we have no case at the stock clocks. With this test, we hit thermal throttle up above 75 degrees Celsius. When it hits thermal throttle, it's going to drop that CPU down to as low as I've seen, 400 megahertz, which is going to diminish performance. So we really want to keep the CPU under that threshold, and that's where the Pi 40 case comes in. 
In blue, at the very bottom, we have the Pi 40 case at the stock clocks. Maximum temperature we hit was 52 degrees Celsius. Looking pretty good here, but a lot of people want to overclock, including myself, so I took it up to 2.1 gigahertz, and the max we saw there was 62 degrees Celsius. So yeah, even with pretty much the highest overclock you can do on the Raspberry Pi 4 as of making this video, the Pi 40 case definitely keeps it under that thermal threshold. It's performing really well like it is. So yeah, even for an early unit, the cooling performance of the Pi Case 40 is awesome. They do have a little work to do on this TPU, but by the time this is officially released, all of that should be fixed up, and I'll be doing one more video. We're going to test the final version, I'll do some more thermal testing on that, and I'll also show you how to install the safe shutdown script. But that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I personally really like the design of the Pi Case 40. Cooling performance is really great. I'm glad we have access to that GPIO externally. And the power button is a big plus. Keep an eye out on the channel for the final version. I'll do a full review on that. If you have any questions about what we have now, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.